Who do you look at around the league as you're studying and say, we're going to have to run through them? Celtics. No one in the West. Nah, I'm fine in the West. I poke bears. Um, I don't respect no one until they come and give me 40. The Los Angeles Lakers will advance by virtue of a 125-85 win. It's a parade inside my city. Yeah. <laughs> this Memphis Grizzlies team was talking all year long, but they ended up messing around and poked the wrong bear. You want a 40? You got it, motherfucker. Not in the way you thought, but just know you got it. But the way we have seen this team progress from a young, exciting team that everyone loved to now the most hated team in the league is crazy. But their own cockiness is what got them. Last season ended with a loss to Golden State in the second round and that cockiness was on full display with John Morant talking shit to Steph Curry in the first game of the series after they won. And what really didn't help was this idiot Dylan Brooks contributing not only nothing on the offensive side of the basketball but also some dirty plays against both Stephen Curry and Gary Payton the second. But the Warriors finished them off in six games after all of that. There's one player on the Grizzlies who tweeted strength in numbers after they beat us in the regular season and it pissed me off so much. I can't wait to retweet that thing. Freaking bum. That, I had to watch that. I'm just like, this freaking clown. You would assume that this would become a humbling experience for this young team, but nope, Dylan Brooks had the nerve to say this in his press conference. Um, they know that we're going to come every single year. Um, you know, we're young and they're getting old, so um, they know we're coming every single year. Um, and that's the way I play. I play for the respect. And we just kept building and building and building and more guys got on the train and we were able to, you know, create something like this and, you know, keep building this dynasty. And We'll come back to these statements later on, man. I can't believe he said this shit with a straight face. It wasn't just him with cockiness, though. It would only continue as a team in the next season. But this was going to be a huge year for Memphis. The young guys are only getting better and they were becoming an actual threat in the Western Conference. Everyone saw them as a threat. In the first 30 games, they stood as the number one seed in the conference with their confidence now at an all-time high. Who do you look at around the league as you're studying and say, we're going to have to run through them? Celtics. No one in the West. Nah, I'm fine in the West. Man, listen, I fully understand. If Malika Andrews was in front of me asking me that question, I might fuck around and tell her I ain't worried about nobody. Let's not forget when Jalen Brown had that exact same energy talking to Taylor Rooks. Six years, I'm going to go ahead and say five or six. Go ahead and say that. So you win in the championship every year from here. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to drink. You already did. You already said it. And I don't play to lose, so I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm gonna go. I'm gonna give it a five. Hey man, he got two more years and five rings to go, but you know what? That's the energy you gotta have. However, from the moment that John Morant said he is fine in the West, things only seem to get worse. Three days later, they had a very anticipated matchup with the Golden State Warriors, a matchup that John Morant wanted, although without Stephen Curry. But by the end of the third quarter, yeah, this shit got ugly. Great job of helping and blocking the shot. That's still a defense by Jim Montgomery. Well, there's no doubt. And this again, this. this started Clay, they've said that you guys are old, that the road to the championship goes through Boston, not necessarily Golden State. I think you showed Dylan Brooks what you think about all that, but what message did you want to send tonight? Man, they was talking about dynasty and all that. You can't talk dynasty when you haven't won before. They took a massive L in this one, but the Fine in the West comment would only get worse from this point on. In January, they went on a five game losing streak against Western Conference teams and quickly lost that number one seed. A loss to the Lakers, Suns, Kings, another to Golden State, and then Minnesota. But again, it only gets worse. In February, right before the trade deadline, the NBA landscape now completely changes. Kyrie to Dallas and KD to Phoenix. Not only that, but the Lakers end up making some sleeper moves to make their team a lot better. But John Moran is unfazed. All right. <laughs> Raise your hand if you're fine in the West. You're not fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Listen, John Moran, when it comes to confidence, he's got it. He said it himself. I would like to know play against him. So. Yeah. You know, yeah, this time you're not saying, I would have cooked a... I would have cooked him too. <laughs> you would have cooked Michael Jordan? Man, I... 
Nobody got more confidence than 12. Okay, maybe it's just Taylor Rooks or Malika Andrews being in front of a player bringing these statements out, because there's no fucking way. But despite Memphis slipping from their good start to the season and contenders in the West making some changes and getting better, and like Memphis always does, they continue to talk, especially Dylan Brooks and especially towards Draymond Green, who responded to everything that he said. He said, I don't like Draymond at all. You don't know me. That's number one. I just don't like Golden State. I quite frankly wouldn't like a team that beats me all the time either. That's number two. If you ever wondered why the Memphis Grizzlies is not ready to compete for a championship, look no further than this idiot right here. They're actually depending on this guy to help them win a championship. And yet, y'all, you running around talking about a dynasty? The dynasty starts after you. Not with you. And of course, this made the matchup between these two teams another highly anticipated one. But the Warriors got cooked, giving Brooks the last laugh, I guess, at least for now. That's what I do. I talk. And, you know, I told him, I told, I, I told him that, um, you know, keep that mic, keep that mic. He's better at the mic than pooping. You know what I'm saying? So keep doing this podcast, keep blogging, keep doing this thing off the court. You know, it's cute. It's fun for him. All right, man, I respect him for trying to take on this villain role for the NBA, but what the fuck was that delivery? Lame as hell, man. Sound like you were rehearsing that shit in the mirror just to fumble your words. But this matchup had everyone wanting a Warriors-Grizzlies playoff series with all this talking going on. And that was with the playoffs now just a month away so we could really see if they were fine in the West. But with Memphis, these guys can start beef with anybody because they simply talk that much. Going back to 2022, they got LeBron James going with with their talk. Shoot some free throws only his of the night. You know, when Ja was drafted, some were saying, oh, well, that's the consolation after Zion, but I'll tell you what, you visit that draft. Huh. The referees are now telling uh, They're just scoring at will right now. That's 56% overall. LeBron! Bring it right back with authority! Which, ironically, this was the matchup that Dylan Brooks himself wanted the most in the first round. Is there any team, any person, or any team that you dislike the most that you would look forward to playing in this first round? Dislike, I don't really dislike nobody. You know, I just bring a competitive edge, um, but I wouldn't mind playing LeBron uh, in a seven game series. Um, the legacy's there. Um, First time back in the playoffs, knock them out right away in the first round. Um, but it'll test us good, you know? They got good pieces, good players, and, and that'll be a good first round matchup for us. And Dylan Brooks got exactly what he wanted, and he found out real quick. That shit wasn't sweet with the Los Angeles Lakers. They were getting dominated in the second half of game one to quickly lose that home court advantage. But in game two, they bounced back, and of all people, Dylan Brooks is the one to hit the dagger over LeBron to tie the series. That's when he made a big mistake once again, running his mouth to the media. The Lakers are making that run, they get it to 14. You and LeBron have that exchange. There are people out there that say, maybe maybe you shouldn't do that with one of the better players in the game. What, I guess, what, what were you thinking? I don't care. He's old. I poke bears. Um, I don't respect no one until they come and give me 40. The Lakers opened up game three with one of the most dominant stars I have ever seen to a game. They were playing with a purpose to embarrass this team, outscoring them 35 to nine in the first quarter. And Brooks was certainly getting embarrassed too. He started this game missing eight straight shots and he got ejected in the third quarter for trying to grab Lamit. The Lakers now took a 2-1 series lead and there wasn't much talking going on after that for Memphis. After game four, it would stay that way with the Lakers taking a 3-1 lead, defending home court with an overtime win. This team, all season long, has so much to say, but once again, they were getting humbled. Dylan Brooks refused to even talk to the media after that game. Now they did their best to keep this series interesting and brought home the game five win, but game six, it was about to get nasty. Bain switches on to him. We'll see if Russell gets it up to him. There's your answer. Well, that sequence is going to help. James, Gabriel slams it home. Levin now shooting against him. James popped the clutch. Got it to fall. LeBron activated. Slot cut by James. Oh! 
Oh! Hit. Elbow for AD, out to Russell. Three on the clock, got to get busy and launch. It's been that type of night. I'll tell you what, he turned the hands of time back. Davis! Elevating and detonating! Fairest of luxuries right now for the Lakers. Mark Jones, you know what it is? Tell me. It's not a three by D -Lo. He's been By the end of the third quarter, this game was over. But the Lakers just had one more mission. Kick their rass by 40 points for Dylan Brooks. I don't respect no one until they come and give me 40. In the Warriors and the Kings. Christie. Got it. See, as you can see, the more you fuck around, the more you're going to find out. And also... If you stay down here and you never fuck around, you'll never find out.